What? Let me let me process this information really quick cuz what? There are so many things that were What? Let's let's start with the notes cuz I'm still wrapping my head around it. <laughs> I need a moment to re uh regain my uh my bearings. Oh here. Hold on a sec. The expert train detacher. The expert train detacher. Alright. <laughs> Just wanted to make that comment. That it's uh it's funny that <laughs> Doctor Ublick decided Prof uh, Dr. Ublick decided to uh, assign Blake to the uh, the, <laughs> the cart detachment duty because I just immediately reminded uh, I got reminded of the uh, the black trailer. <laughs> Goodbye, click. And she unhooks. Uh, she cuts the uh, the coupling for the train and just sails away and, and separates herself from Adam. And I just thought it was funny that uh, <laughs> Blake. <laughs> You took care of detaching these carts. And then lo and behold it's already it was already all part of the plan. Wow. Um I, we got a lot to talk about. Let me keep up with these notes. Oh, I I thought I said modified bad bums, and I was like, what? Bonified, bonified bad bums. That's the uh, substitution of uh, a bad butt. <laughs> Holy crap! Doctor Ublick in action did not disappoint. It was impressive. He has this sort of rocket napalm flame throwing baton that's what i'm going for <laughs> a rocket launching flame throwing baton and it did not disappoint um i'm guessing those units that they had or like cheap units because they weren't as shiny as the paladin that uh that uh Roman was using when he was uh confronting the girls in the city because they looked dull and and like not as shiny and silvery as the other one I might be remembering it wrong but I remember it was more shinier than these that they had in the tunnel. Maybe it was the lighting in the tunnel that was dark, but I'm not exactly sure. It looks like they were knockoffs, like cheap units, because they they were very easily destroyed. Maybe their contact in the Atlas military provided them with blueprints. They're like, hey, figure it out. Here's how you build one. Oh, but can't we get units? Probably not. No, because we have them all inventorized. You can build your own using cheap components, but good luck, basically. Because also the weapons that they were using, they didn't have that, that rocket arsenal and the uh, the lasers or anything like that. They just had like these really crappy pulse cannons. And um, so I'm guessing that the units that they had were like cheap knockoffs that they constructed on their own. Maybe that's why they were underground all this time. They were building up units to ride into the city. And then do a, a joint operation with the Grimm to wreak havoc. Or...
to produce themselves as the hero? Because if you're going to go into the city and just wreak havoc, <clears throat> why so many faunas and why? No, that doesn't make sense because you wouldn't get any credit because people would be like, oh, citizens of Vale, we have saved you. Uh, yeah, from something that you brought upon us, you know, it, it would take away from their credit that they were trying to gain. So it was, it was a full frontal assault. They're gonna breach on the ground, bring in the Grim, and have all these units to maybe wage war with all the other units that came from the Kingdom of Atlas that General Ironwood James has floating around the city. So, well, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, so anyway, uh, Dr. Ublick just completely obliterated units, and um, <laughs> I can't say I, I didn't expect it, because when we first met, I'm, I'm shaking my desk, when we first met Sway, that's why he was in a can and he was basically just <laughs> there for who knows how long until he reached uh, the bedroom where the girls are at and then he just <laughs> poop so I'm guessing that this particular dog considering the way that he's treated He shares a very similar semblance to Yang, which is the kinetic energy redirection of, of sorts. Because um, basically he just became a, <laughs> a canine cannonball, you know. And that's, uh, that's interesting. I'm not going to try to poke logic out of it because we don't fully know the... the the whole concept of sway. Sway. In any case. So yeah. Adorable little doggy stayed behind and helped Dr. Ublick. <laughs> Let me continue with my notes. I forgot her name. Neapolitan because of the ice cream. <laughs> Neapolitan because of the ice cream. Um, because of the chocolate, strawberry, and I'm guessing the vanilla is her skin color. Um, what about her? Dude sounds like Reaper. I remember now. Um, I thought it was going to be a personal, like, there was some sort of history with Yag. At the moment, I didn't think about it. But then I remembered, oh yeah, she helped Roman escape during the Paladin incident, and I'm guessing, I'm guessing that really made a, a bad taste. It left a bad taste in her mouth, and she can't, she can't uh, let it slide. You know, the one that got away, and I'm gonna get her now. So that's why she's probably this one's mine. That's that, that that's the connection that they had. I was like, wow, it seems like they have a history together. And they do. I just couldn't remember at the time. They uh, they were in the Paladin incident, and then Yang, uh, Neo, Neopolitan, helped Roman escape by becoming a glass something, a glass mirror image of themselves. <laughs> and then Wise cracks the joke. I guess you really make her plans fall apart. Eh? Eh? <laughs> She's trying. Anyway, Weiss is trying. Weiss is being so thoughtful of her teams. She has come a very long way from what, I, from what we last remember. Um, they have the uh, the pineapple in the beginning, and then as she starts progressing along, She's becoming more involved with her team. She's becoming more um, 
there for them, helping Ruby be the leader. And like she said, and like she said, she's going to be the best teammate you've ever had. I can't be the leader. I keep shaking my desk. I can't be the leader. That's fine. I'll be the best teammate you've ever had. And, and she's living true to it. She provided Blake with a, a magazine filled with dust, dust cartridges. And she's coming around. That pineapple is getting sweeter by the moment. <laughs> oh, Weiss, Weiss, Weiss. Let me uh, finish my notes and then we'll just review everything. I love the Weiss thing song. I love the Weiss theme song. It's oh, excuse me. I love the Weiss theme song when when they when they uh rearrange the tones for Mirror Mirror and they did it in Best Day Ever when um when they're doing the food fight scene in the cafeteria or the, the, the mess hall. The mess hall. <laughs> yeah. They did it there when when Weiss shows up. The music switches from the rock to like her theme song, which is the I'll stop singing, but you know, <laughs> it's cool. It sounds so cool. It sounds so cool that I'm gonna not play it because I'm gonna get hit by a copyright. But look it up. <laughs> On the best day ever in the soundtrack, it plays when she comes up and she like with <laughs> with the swordfish. <laughs> and um <laughs> and um it just sounds so cool they did the same thing here in the train when she's like I'll take this guy you go on ahead and there she goes the theme song kicks up and and you can pick up on it the dun 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 dun, dun and it sounds so cool i like it it sounds really cool i I have this thing for, for particular tones and songs that I really, if it sounds really cool and really like all the tones have this harmonic resonance to them and it just sounds so good, I appreciate it so much and it's cool. And um, so I picked it up <laughs> and it's cool. And, and then Blake goes to... Um, <laughs> and then um Blake goes up to Roman and uh fight resumes. You know, thinking about that, if you consider this the team in a way fell apart when they started splitting up. You know, the Yang stayed behind and she was defeated by Neo. Weiss stayed behind and she was defeated by Reaper. Oh, <laughs> I finally wait, I can do this. Hold on. <clears throat> I finally get to kill a snake. <laughs> Um, so yeah, by the Reaper Chainsaw guy. <laughs> um, so she was defeated by him. It looked like she was going to get chopped in half, but you know, perhaps her aura kicked in and took the most beating out of it for her. Or maybe she might have blocked with her sword, because her sword was, was almost at an angle from the chainsaw coming in, so she could have blocked and then taken a hit and then flown off. But it was unexpected when he just out of nowhere just grabbed her by the face and said, Come here, you! <laughs> Get over here! <laughs> and slammed her in the floor. Um, so many different things taking place. But, um... So the, the team fell apart. Like, they separated. 
and then they start falling apart. Like, you know, the only one that was successful, and I'm guessing it's because of her drive, and perhaps because maybe that's the person she should have been fighting with. Unlike the other two. Yeah, maybe. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe they should have organized themselves differently. Blake and uh, and Roman. That's a good fight. Blake will win. She has the advantage. Weiss and the big guy. I'm not exactly sure. Do you think maybe Yank could have been successful at that fight? It's possible. Maybe. And then Weiss with Neo. <clears throat> Perhaps the organization was not right. Excuse me. <coughs> Alright, so... So the teams fell apart and... The mom encounter, yes. Was that her mom? Was that bonafide, uh, another bonafide bad bum? Was that her mom? Because holy crap. You know, the presence that she has. I guess you can say it's like at the same level of the presence of, of Adam, Blake's um, mentor. And the fact that they have this, this, I don't want to say aura, because it's not, the, it's not the aura I'm referring to. I'm referring to like this, this, it, it, I don't know what the word for it is. It, 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 it exhumes this, this area, this, this, okay, it's a freaking aura. It exhumes this aura of like dominance and dangerousness and, powerfulness and when she just shows up stops Neo from finishing off Yang and then her slow movements and her composed nature and then she's like looking and then she brings it over and she's like I got something for you and then she has this huge array of different dust things and she's like let's go with red and she pulls out her um her long uh, I don't know what to call it. I don't, I'm not I'm not that adept with name of swords, but you know what? Let's call it a katana because <laughs> it's very long. So she pulls out this long katana type sword. And Neo at that point is like <laughs> duck this shoes arm out. <laughs> she just bails. And I'm guessing it's her mom. Because she lingers, she looks, she's probably thinking things, maybe like, you still have a lot to learn, or be more careful, or whatever, I don't know. I don't know what the relationship is, I can only speculate at this point, but I'm going to say that was her mom. The interaction and coming in to rescue her daughter. That was her mom. And then she opens a portal. Into somewhere. On a moving train. The implications of this, I don't know. I do not understand the physical laws and the 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 meta f manifestations of how things are and the the energy and how things are balanced and remnant yet I don't have these details so all I can do all I can do at this point is say that's how it is you can apparently open up portals if that's your semblance and maybe that's why she's always on the move she's portaling around 
And who's to say it's just for locations? I don't know. I don't I don't have details right now, so I'm only speculating. So that was Yang's mom. <laughs> Scary woman. Very powerful and intimidating. And let me finish off my notes and I'll revisit all the things. Yeah, Yang's quick defeat. From what I understood, Yang had her semblance of that kinetic energy transfer, whereas more as she's getting hit, she receives these impacts and she like charges up her energy level and where she can redirect them and deliver them back. And... And the uh, the fact that she was so quickly defeated with um, with Neo makes me wonder if there's some sort of cooldown because she was doing her watch and then she got pulled into the action. Maybe because she was tired, she didn't have enough time to fully charge your semblance because we know that it is possible for your semblance to take a toll on you and considering no, that I when really when Ruby was trying to carry a penny and she did her speed burst and it kind of like all that energy transfer trying to carry that weight brought down her uh her uh, her her energy levels to the point where she like passed out to a point she she uh, lost consciousness and um, it's possible that because of these things maybe Yang wasn't fully charged up and good to go maybe she was maybe her fight she had to use the semblance beforehand <clears throat> when they were coming into the cave to rescue Ruby. I mean we don't we don't know. We didn't see what they had to go through to get to where they were before the fight. But clearly the impacts took a toll on Yang and the harder she gets hit did not make her stronger at this point. And that's the only thing I can speculate or that's the only thing I can piece it together for it to make sense. Um but yeah she she suffered to defeat at the hands of Neo and and those are all my notes. So, revisiting everything as a whole. <clears throat> this big operation involved grabbing a train, setting up charges, detonating the charges along the way to breach the tunnels, to bring in the Grim, and attract them into the city where the train itself had some sort of like a, what you call a, uh, some sort of like a plower, I don't want to say a snow plow, but it was some sort of like impact plower to breach through the concrete and, uh, and just tear a hole through the, uh, the covered area, allowing the Grim access into the city and, um, that was the plan. They were they were gonna also support the Grim by using their Paladin knockoff versions, their 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 cheap equivalents of their paladins to wreak havoc. And maybe while the uh, the military is intervening with the Grim, maybe they were gonna use these units to attack the military, and that way everything was gonna be in place and everything was gonna be affected. So, <clears throat> so they were preparing for a while. They had all these things coming in and everything that was taking place. Let's revisit 
my previous comment regarding Grimm. I mentioned that Grimm was perhaps a natural equalizer for nature, for the world, in which they would actively seek out all these negative thoughts, these, these, these bad emotions, and destroy them, get rid of them. Because we don't want, or nature doesn't want these things. And, based on some comments that I was answering, they did bring up something that I didn't really think about at the moment, but it mentions that it doesn't. They, the Grim don't only attack humans, but they also attack human creations, and that got me thinking: if the Grim attack human creations, why are the cities not under siege? Why are they not constantly being attacked by the Grim? And then I remember back to the other um, video in which they mention that this, these kingdoms, they have been able to withstand because they have natural borders. And that helps support that theory that, in the words of Applejack, and I hate to say this, <laughs> it ain't natural. If something is man-made, if there is a city, for example, Mountain Glen, that is not naturally built, that they just build a structure outside of the wall to, like, develop the city further out of Vale, and because of the fact that it's not natural, it attracts the Grim. It's like, that's not supposed to be there. You know, that's not part of nature. That's not supposed to be there. Let's destroy it. Because that's our purpose. Our purpose is to destroy things that don't belong. And that's, that, that statement right there creates the uncertainty that maybe humans don't belong in this world. Or that the negative emotion don't belong in the world. Or... Humans don't belong in the world, but because the fact that they have that reasoning ability and that they are always, you know, self-aware, because of this notion, they understand and they know that they know what evil is, what bad things are, what the opposite of reciprocity is, and that that energy right there is what attracts them to eliminate things that are not supposed to be here. Um, I don't know where to take this because I haven't really sat down and thought about it, but these are things that are there, that are present, and things that I'm kind of noticing. It seems like the Grimm are the natural equalizers of the world. The best way to think about them, <clears throat> if you want to look at it from a scientific point of view, would be to think about them as if they were white blood cells. And let me explain what I mean by this. They are like white blood cells because when the body, which is in this case the world of Remnant, when the body produces Grimm, the Grimm are born. How? We still don't know. I still don't know. Maybe it has been revealed in volume 3 or 4, but at this point, I don't know. So the world produces its antibodies, the Grimm, and those are your white cells. You have different types of white cells for different encounters on the land, in the forest, in the air, whatever you can think of. These are the first line of defense. Now, again, by a scientific point of view, when you have a biological encounter with two living organisms and one of them survives, 
the surviving organism adapts to what it just encountered and it mutates it mutates itself into becoming something stronger so that it when it encounters that same type of biological material it has the advantage and it can easily do away with it no problem that would be the uh the evolving that would be the the grim changing their appearance toughening up getting more spikes getting sharper teeth getting longer claws becoming more agile because they survived an encounter the 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 the, the vanilla white cell the basic standard level 1 grim encountered humans and it survived it wasn't it was it was reckless it was just go out and destroy whatever I see and I find. Oh, what's this? It can fight back. What the heck? Oh, my God. I survived. I don't want to go through that again. Blah, blah, blah. Evolution. And it evolves into something stronger, better, more efficient, and more armored. And this is this is the, uh, the inclination that I'm taking. It seems like the Grim are the white blood cells of remnant and it is rather unfortunate that humans are being targeted because I vouch for humans we're all humans and we like the characters but it seems like these characters are an alien entity to this planet um because you can think back from the beginning in the first video since mankind darkness sorry it first talks about darkness 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 and that when mankind darkness and the creatures and everything and he was always outnumbered and how did they survive we don't know but they managed to have like people reproducing and whatever and then they managed to find and uh, utilize dust and then with dust they were able to build their cities by using natural borders because it belongs to the planet it belongs to remnant um, so that's that's the indication of how I am metaphorically interpreting the purpose of Grimm why they're there and why they do the things that they do they are attracted by these negative emotions which could be brought upon self-awareness and knowing that people know and people understand what's good what's bad what's fear what's anger what's hate all these things attracts them because it's not natural in a natural environment taking away the human element dogs don't attack each other because one was disloyal to the other or because one stole a piece of steak from the other there's this hierarchy of alpha clan and so on and so forth regarding the the hierarchy of animals and that's pretty much in the entire animal kingdom it differs with minor details here and there but it follows the same protocol as in you have a leader the pack and everybody follows the leader when the leader is gone another leader takes over so on and so forth and we're there to survive we're there to eat sleep reproduce and just be there versus the human element we question why are we there what's our purpose what are we looking for why do we have to do this but I don't feel like doing that I want to do this instead but you're a part of society now you have to do this you know and and, and it just stems from there and as a way to to counteract it 
it is possible that the planet itself is creating Grimm. Where do they come from? We still don't know. I still don't know. I don't know. But those are my thoughts. And then also another thing I wanted to mention um, that I also read in the comments that uh, I, I was picking on the hints, but I, I thought it was just me. But when somebody mentioned it, I was like, that's right. Okay, so you picked it up too, so it's not just you. So I'm going to mention it now. It was when I was talking about Blake, that she has her animal and her human side, right? And it seems that they're in constant turmoil within her. And that's why she's so like, but I don't want to run away, but I always run away, you know? And the the interesting thing is that in the beginning, the book that Blake was reading was about a man that was that had two souls fighting for control of his body. And that is possible. That could have been the indication of what she might be facing. She's reading up on a book that has a similar turmoil situation that she's experiencing right now to see if she can get some different point of view as to how do I deal with this you know I want to be there I want to fight I want to help I want to be present but I always end up running away I always leave I always flee my semblance is bailed out you know so she's probably reading up on that book to get a better understanding to understand herself. This show, let me tell you something. This freaking show, man, since the beginning, cross volume, it doesn't matter. If it was there, there was a reason behind it. And holy crap, it's really something. This can make us go so deep, so deep into things that it would take me three, four, five hours just sitting here and thinking about these things. They're in the city. Just random thoughts that are coming back to my mind. If you thought that John's aura gauge was big, so I, <laughs> it's, um, it's crazy that that dog was able to take that beating. Just he became a fireball, and he just <laughs> destroyed those mock-up paladins like if it was nobody's business. Holy crap! That's crazy. Um, am I missing something? Let's review. Tunnel, tab, train, carts, lake, doctor, bombs, grip, train, go, fights. Yang's bomb. Roman, train. City. I mentioned about Grimm. I mentioned about Blake. And I think that's it. That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you so much for watching another watch along with Char Fox. That's me. Um, we are officially one episode away from the very hyped up of volume three that everybody is like, I can't wait, 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 I can't wait. So one episode away and clearly one world of remnant away, which I have already requested my moderators to produce for me so that I can bring it in. They told me don't go looking for it because there's a lot of different things out there. 
and knowing me they know that if I see a thumbnail with something particularly interesting on it it's enough to make me start thinking about it and maybe ruin things for me so they don't want me to go navigating outside of my channel so they're going to produce the Aura World of Remnant for me and send it to me so that I can watch it and I will probably watch it before or after I'll leave that up to you um, because apparently everybody's saying that it doesn't matter what order it's in as long as I watch it so I understand how Aura works better so if you guys want me to watch it before the next episode let me know if you want me to watch it after let me know after I finish washing uh, washing <laughs> watching after I finish finish watching the um, the episode the world of remnant I will go ahead and listen to the soundtrack for volume 2 just like I did with volume 1 and then I'm gonna do my final video on volume 2 which includes everything that I can remember and that I talked about I'll revisit to see if something else comes to mind as I'm going over all the things I'll revisit it mentally from what I remember I'll talk about the songs their lyrics what I think of them what they're telling me and what I am understanding from it and and with that we will close volume 2 and move on to the much anticipated volume 3 um I'm missing something yes I am what was it oh yes for the songs in volume 1 it was so painful and distracting to have you guys sit through me listening through the songs and then trying to remember as best as I could the lyrics so that's why I started that movement of free the lyrics and my moderators have accepted they are going to say okay we'll let you listen uh, we'll let you read the lyrics after you listen to the songs so that you don't have to sit there and hold people hostage for 15 minutes 20 minutes while you're trying to remember things that you just heard um, so I will have that to my advantage and will listen to what my moderators consider to be very important key songs they know a lot about Ruby and they have been giving me keys and I have been trying to open the doors on my own so that's how this has been working um, Twitter follow me on Twitter for updates I will try to be active there reddit we have a subreddit created by Nexus kid go in there talk amongst yourself selves I will try to visit if I can once I get the go-ahead from Nexus kid because he's the only moderator besides myself but I can't go moderate spoilers because I'll spoil myself so you know <laughs> I am trusting it to that I'm I'm, I'm depending on him for that so when he has time and he reviews on his accord and he says hey there's some comments it's good to go then I'll probably go in and um, discuss with you guys and we can talk theories the things that we know so far and it'll be great I love thinking and hearing what other people have to say because it makes me cross-examine what I just said and I'm like wait does that make sense yeah it kinda does okay and then we move from there oh okay here's another thing that okay hold on I just remember something else let's go back to Glen Glinda and James let's think about this for a second all right Remember I was talking about like, wow, that's a huge character change from Glinda, you know, because originally it was like, oh, I can't stand your machismo bravado coming out here with your warships and blah, 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 you know, and then it's like, senpai, what's the matter, senpai, why are you looking menacingly over there, what's going on, talk to me, senpai, oh, my arm is acting up.
I gotta look in the horizon. <clears throat> you know? So, <laughs> so uh, let's revisit that really quick. What happened before that? Because the party was over. All right? They danced. May I have this dance? <sighs> Baka. It's not like I want to dance with you or anything. And they go dancing, whatever, right? And um, so they danced. And then the next day, they had their assignments. The kids had their assignments. And then that night, James is sitting outside by himself. Now, how did Glinda find him out there? And I, this is just me speculating, but some people mentioned it too. And I'll, 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 I, I feel compelled to look in that direction as well. They were, uh, <laughs> they were making the blankets warm together. They were. They were together that night, and then his arm started acting up, and he decided to dress himself up and go and stare menacingly at something and uh, at the horizon. And Wait. Mm. I can't. I didn't. I didn't pay attention to the background. Yes, it was. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if Ospin's tower was in the background. I'm not sure. I can't quite remember. But if it was, he wasn't staring menacingly at the horizon. He was thinking about Ospin. And I can't I can't remember if the tower was in the background. If it was then it makes sense. He woke up, he went for a walk, whatever, his arm was acting up. We'll talk about that later, once I get more evidence. Cyborg! I'm almost certain he's a cyborg. But I don't have proof yet. Just that metal plate and his statement of my arm was acting up. Um, so he dressed up, he went for a walk, and also he was thinking about Ozpin. And then he saw the tower and he just, damn you, Ospin, why don't you trust me? Why don't you tell me what's really going on? And then, and then he got lost in his thoughts, staring at the tower. If the tower was in the background, I don't remember. But if it wasn't, then he just found this. He was looking at his marvelous warship floating in space and he's like, yeah, that's mine. That's my wife. <laughs> no, but uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, James. But then Glenda got chilly because the bed was not as warm as it was before and wakes up, goes outside, and hey, he didn't get that far. There he is. Is something the matter? Senpai, are you okay? <laughs> yeah, it's just his arm. Oh, so your arm was bothering you, Senpai, and you decided to dress yourself up and stare menacingly at the horizon, right? You wouldn't understand. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm squeezing this. Um, that's how I believe that interaction took place. And then she starts consoling him. Listen, it's not like that. It's like this. It's because of this. 
this is why he's doing these things, or we don't know, but we have to trust him. And you were always fighting the good fight. You're always doing what you believe is right, despite everybody thinking that you're doing it wrong. You know, and because of that, it just, the shift becomes understandable. For crying out loud, they were just intimate with each other. Of course she's going to be very sensible and considerate about his senpai. So, you know. <laughs> I'll stop. I'll stop. Um... <laughs> I hope I'm not sh I hope I'm not shots fired on this with Jane fans uh, or Glinda fans for that no it's mostly Glinda I'm making fun of Glinda I'm sorry Glinda fans she's cool she's strict I'll leave it at that so um that's it so as I was saying Twitter for updates um Reddit for discussion, comments. I'll try to visit regularly, maybe twice a week. I'll try. And Patreon. If you want, if you like what I do, if you think it's fun or you enjoy it and you want to help me out financially, you're more than welcome to. I don't expect it, but I greatly appreciate it. So thank you very much. Now, for real this time, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you so much for spending some time with me and listening to me ramble. We're almost done with Volume 2. We'll get there. And um, thank you so much for your support and for everything that you do. I um, believe that's it. Oh, look at that. An hour and seven minutes. Oh, wait, no, because I'm going to cut the other video out, so I still haven't broken the hour. But it survived. It survived recording an hour. Good things. Um, thank you so much for watching and being with me for another watch along with Char Fox. That's me. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. <laughs> Ruffle, 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 ruffle